I'm working on my wife's 2003 Volkswagen Beetle, the uh, driver's door latch micro switch uh, was not turning the dolomite on and it wouldn't remind you if you've left your headlights on and of course uh, it wouldn't turn the alarm on if somebody broke in because the switch is not operating. I've got that side apart so I'll show you how to check that on the, on the passenger side. easy way to check is take your uh, finger and close the latch with your finger. There's the first click. Okay, now what I'm going to do, you can see the courtesy light, is barely move this up again. If you can hear the clicking of the micro switch, See, this side is good, and be sure when you're done doing that to pop your door latch open so that will be open before you shut the door. Uh, uh, there's several videos on YouTube that show how to get the door panel off, but quickly I'll show you. Uh, you need to take, take a little screwdriver and pop this cover off. It pops off. There's two bolts underneath there. There's three bolts underneath, I think three or four screws underneath on the bottom. And then uh, use a door panel tool, your fingers, and just pop the panel loose off of the clips around the perimeter of it. And then, the, and then slide the door panel up off the lip, off the top here, and the door panel will be loose. And while I'm right here thinking about it, you're going to have to take the on the other side, here's where your key lock is at. You're going to have to take this out. You need to pop this rubber plug out, and there is a splined bolt in there. It's not Torx, it's a spine tool. I'll show you that in a minute. And it's four millimeter spine. Take that screw out, don't drop it down inside the door. Actually, you can just loosen it if you want. Loosen that, and this pulls straight out. This is going into the latch itself. This whole thing will pull straight out. It might be stuck a little bit. You might have to get a little screwdriver behind it and pry it out. And while you're right here, these are also splined bolts. They're an eight millimeter spline. Take these two bolts out, they go right into the latch. So remove those. When you get the door panel off, here's what you're gonna see. You're gonna see what they call a carrier, a carrier panel. And this panel has a of course the window regulator on it and also the uh, door latch mounts mounts right back here behind it and the latch will come out with the carrier that's why you took those two bolts out of the end of the door to get this off there is a rivet here and a rivet right here you can either grind the head off which it's kind of close quarters there or uh, center punch it and drill it out I believe I used a maybe a quarter inch drill bit or a little bit larger drill the head off of those rivets and then pop the rest of the rivet uh, back into the door with a hammer and a punch and then around the perimeter there's a torx bolts take them all out but one other thing before you take the door panel completely off before you unplug the power window switch there's some big plastic plugs here and here Pop those out and roll your window down till you can see these bolts. Uh, it's probably going to be approximately three inches. Roll the window down. Loosen these bolts up. This is just a clamp. It clamps to the glass. Loosen the bolts up. Slide the glass up to the top of the door. Wrap some tape over from the glass over the top of the door and tape the glass in the up position. And then you can either unplug the harness right here it goes through the door jam. This is the door jam boot, and this uh, plugs into the left hand kick panel behind the left hand kick panel. Or it might be easier just to unplug everything and unclip everything and take this harness completely loose so you can get the carrier off. The only thing is, you're going to have to get the carrier partially off before you can reach back here and unplug the door latch switch. So either way works. 
uh, to take the carrier off. I think you pull the bottom out first a little bit since these are kind of up behind the door. Pull the bottom out first and then slide that out and like I said the, the latch will come off with it. And here's the latch. Well first while I'm thinking about it here are these spline bolt tools. These are Mac tools. It's not Torx, it's a spline. So you'll have to have some of those. Here's the door latch. It's actually setting it upside down. I was going to show you the micro switch and how I actually fixed it. This one, you could not hear it clicking the micro switch. And I will show you why. But and first of all, this is the micro switch right here, this little rectangular black switch. And right here is the little plunger it's hard to see in the video but that's the plunger on this micro switch this black piece here has a little ramp on it you'll, you'll see it better when you get it out there's a ramp when you close when you open the door that latch ramp touches that micro switch I'll show you how to check that and you can check the switch. I'll turn my uh, ohm meter on and it's beeping as about one ohm because the switch the latch is open now and it's contacting the micro switch. I will I'll close the latch with my finger. So the door shut now and the switch is open my meter quit beeping and it's out of limits so it's an open circuit because the door is shut now and I'll pull this and open the latch so now I have the switch working the switch plunger is contacting that ramp let me turn my meter off I'll show you the pins I used to check it with. There's some numbers in there, but I can't read them right now. But it's where the white paint is. It's the top left terminal. There is the tab right there, so you know which way I'm looking. The connector tab's on the top. Top left terminal. And then the white mark is on the bottom row, second one from the left. Those two is where you hook your meter if you want to check your micro switch. What happens is, I believe, here's your pivot. This is your pivot for your latch. And this gets worn just enough. It's real tight tolerance for that, where that micro switch touches the ramp. That ramp's not very tall. So what happens is that this uh, lever wears just enough that it won't touch the micro switch anymore. The switch might be okay, but it wasn't touching it. So I kind of uh, kind of rigged it. If you want to try it, save you two hundred dollars instead of buying a latch from Volkswagen. I drilled. There's a plastic rivet right there that I uh, took a utility knife and cut the head off. And then I took a 3 30 seconds drill bit and drilled the plastic rivet out. Now, you don't want to go too deep or you might go into the micro switch and ruin it. Just go through the metal, drill that plastic out. I'm sorry, I'm not getting the video pointing to what I want to look at half the time. But you can see the micro switch is down on the right. It's uneven a little bit it's because after I drilled that rivet out, I pushed down on the switch just a little bit. If you'll watch while you're pushing that down, watch the back side with the latch in the closed position. You want to latch it and get that micro switch almost touching the lever. And then what I did was I drilled a little hole right above it and put a little screw in there to hold it so it would push down and hold it in place 
and you're going to have to play with it and get the distance just right. If you go down too far, then that ramp is going to rub on the whole switch body and it won't unlatch properly. So you're kind of going to have to play with it and hope you get it right. But that's how to fix that. Like I said, if you, if you test it beforehand and it's not clicking the micro switch while everything is still mounted, then that's probably what the problem is. And uh, that's a way to, to fix it. It, it tests fine with my own meter. I don't see why it won't work. Save me $200, and I'll give it a shot. Thanks for watching.